Good morning to every one of you. And um, let me, in the spirit of all of the celebrations that we have had, you know, wish you a productive Monday, but also um, Tuesday. productive Tuesday. Tuesday. But um, of course, as we continue in our celebration of all of the wonderful achievements, the Juju vibe, the, the St. Lucian Kings, and all of the, the, I think there was an OECS pageant. And of course, we are in winning ways and in, winning, in a winning spirit. And of course, I've been out for some time, but of course, in that whole spirit, I won and I'm back on my feet again, um, strong, stronger, and of course, to continue the work that we've started. This morning, I just need to share, you know, or to clarify um, an issue on public assistance that, that is probably out there. You would have heard a number of persons um, asking questions or persons querying as to why I was removed on public assistance. My, I'm not getting the, the money that I used to get. The recertification of the public assistance program, where we have about 3,000 plus persons receiving monthly support from the government at a cost of, annual cost of approximately $10 million. There's also an amount of 1,500 persons who want to be on the program, but of course you do not have the fiscal space to bring them on. Revealed in the recertification that you have approximately 700 persons who ought not to be on the program because they do not qualify. Now in that kind of work, whether it's in the US, you know, where you have safety net programs, you always have errors of inclusion and errors of omission. In this case, you have a significant error of inclusion. We do not have the, the names of, it, of these individuals to give out or they, um, the, the, there's a gap in the data. So one of the things that we did is to, to if you can, and just to clarify, we only have 181 contact numbers of persons we can reach of persons who ought not to be on the program. We also are aware of, the, of other situations where persons who have passed, somebody is collecting on their behalf and we've had to take action. I could speak personally, somebody came to me and said, yes, that's the situation. I was still collecting on my grandmother's behalf and she passed, we stopped it. So what we had to do was to say, if we cannot get in touch with you and you're supposed to be collecting, let us stop it and wait for you to come forward just to ensure that the persons who really need the support is actually getting it. So you would be really saying to the general public, if for one reason or the other you were supposed to receive your assistance and you not, just contact us. If you miss a month, we will do it retroactively. But we want to ensure that persons who are supposed to receive the monthly support from taxpayers are the right persons receiving it. This is what we're trying to honor and not just to allow things to go on. This is a program that's running on for a very long time and therefore the errors, you know, has been there for a long time. But we are working hard to correct it. Each one of you here would want to know that the person receiving the public assistance are persons who are, you know, deserving of it and not somebody that is placed there for one reason or the other. One of the points that I've made in time past, um, and I think it's worth mentioning again, there are persons we've had with hardship in their lives. They have problems. Not because somebody has hardship in their life means that they must be on public assistance. Not because somebody is out of a job and, and is a single mother means that you must be on public assistance. You may be qualified for something else, but public assistance is targeting individuals who are indigent because it's not for everybody who has crisis in their lives. There's no way you can have a safety net program that can incorporate all problems, all social ills, and that the government will dish out money to address it. So sometimes when I hear from persons, and um, even my colleagues would say, you know, minister, I have a situation there. That person, that person deserves me. No. Yes, the situation is bad. Yes, the persons need intervention. Yes, the person needs some support. It can be support for a, for a month, for support for a, for a few months. But public assistance, to so be on public assistance, receiving that support monthly until you die, so to speak, it is for circumstances that warrant the intervention is necessary. So a 21-year-old, a young person, I've seen 
person's report, the, the, the early 20s, you know, how did that person get on public assistance? How was the person assessed to be on public assistance? Well, the person may have had a, you know, an early pregnancy, a child, and whatever. Of course, the person needs support, but that does not qualify to be on public assistance. So some of what you're hearing, and even if the disabilities, the persons, persons with disabilities, I, we need to understand that whereas the law allows for persons receiving the, the, the disability, it's up to 18, but not all disability situation is in a vulnerable household. So for example, a household with two parents working, maybe a, 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 another sibling working, may have a child who is disabled. The child is qualified. But if you're applying a household inter support, you assessing the household, you could see that the income of that household can mitigate the situation and allow for a child, probably where you have a single parent, where you have a disabled child to receive as against giving every child and you do not have money to give every child. So we are working towards improving and ensuring that our targeting of persons receiving public assistance is done properly, is done through the principle of social justice. That is what we're doing. Yes. Uh, can you provide me a brief recap, please, since I read it few months? Brief, what is brief? Yes, well, um, I, I, again, I, let me repeat myself. I'm, I'm, I'm responding to the fact that some persons are complaining that they're not receiving or they have stopped their public assistance. And out, I, was, I was making the point that there are approximately 3,000 plus persons on public assistance. The assessment of that group indicate that you have approximately 700 persons who ought not to be. And that means they're not qualified, but somehow they got themselves there. Maybe when they went in, they were in a situation, but the situation has improved. We're saying that we need to remove these individuals to allow for 1,500 persons who want to come on, but we do not have the fiscal space. In doing so, sometimes we cannot reach these individuals. And there are situations, a lot of um, persons know why you receive in public assistance, but I cannot receive you and you ought not to receive. So one of the things that we've chosen is like we stop the payment, and hoping that the person would come forward, and if you deserve enough of it, we will, you will get it retroactive. But we, we, we cannot not have contact for you. You change your location, you change your telephone number, but we're supposed to receive you, give you a monthly amount, you're getting it for the bank, but we do not, we, we lose track of you, so we, we stop, we would say, okay, let us stop the payment so that the person come forward. You know? Yeah? No, I was on I was on, on, on sick leave for about a month. I have nothing life threatening. I am extremely okay, well, and um, it is according to my doctor. I have no life threatening situation. I'm alive and well, and I've enjoyed the rest that doctor insisted on, and um, I'm back on my feet. Um, and um, I, I tell you, take care of yourselves and rest, and um, and do the same that I'm doing there right now, and you'll feel good. Well, they're not God. I <laughs> um, they're not doctors, but um, they, they, I hope everybody just remain well. You know, when election calls the prime minister, calls the election, you know, and if it's call it call it today, my hands have to run, and I will run with all of the fervor and passion that I did in time past. Not much to say about that part of the politics, but I'm. Thanking God that I'm alive, I'm well, and um, the rest did me well, you know. So one of the things that I've gotten, a, you know, um, a, a deep appreciation for rest, I, I started my life very early from primary school days, and I, all I know is to play and work, you know. But after, when you, when you reach 60 years, you know, and um, all you've done is play football and just work and play, the body say, no, 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 you need to chill a little. So from, I born in 1965, 
um, I'm probably much older than a lot of you. Oh yeah, I, you know? So, um, I'm good enough. I'm good enough. Yeah, before good you, enough. Before you go, Minister, minimum wage is in effect. Uh, how do you anticipate the impact of the new minimum wage on your, your ministry's efforts to uh, poverty reduction? And would it have any kind of uh, impact on the public assistance? The principle there is social, is, is, is social justice. As we, as as a country, the the the, the um, the various rungs of development, the various levels, and you you continue to we continue to move the country forward. And the prime minister, in establishing minimum wage, the only thing you could do is to build upon it, and that's the beauty of it. We didn't have it before. What we're saying is that there is an amount that is established by which you must pay somebody. And then the persons who participated, the union, the trade unions and professionals took a lot into consideration. This would impact our, our um, in fact, in calculating the minimum wage, they would, have used the, they would have used data from our country poverty survey. So the poverty line, which is approximately $500, dollars per month for indigent family or free, that would have been considered by the professionals in arriving at a minimum wage. So certainly, if we were doing a country poverty survey today, the minimum wage as a as a as as as, as a, 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 data, a data base a data would actually provide guidance in measuring how well persons are doing, how well they are able. So it is useful for us to have a minimum wage at this time, and it will help those persons assessing vulnerability in a more accurate, based on our internal um, um, data. In your, uh, a, a, note, a note came out of, from your office about the after-school program. Can you give us an update on that? How is it going so far? The after-school program, we've, um, we've made some changes this year because we, we implemented the program. I personally felt that the program should be more grassroots and that the, the program should allow for children, the beneficiaries, more post children to, to, to impact as against spending funds on consultancies and supervision, but the children are not there. So as well as the feeding, make, the feeding arrangements and what have you. So the, this was the focus, community-based, so where we, we, have, um, we have young persons involved in the community or persons engaged in the community already implementing an after-school program, and they were feeding the children with their, their pizzas, locally made pizzas, do not disrupt that, and go and pay any high-level restaurant to, to feed the children for after-school. Use, get other inputs so that they, you add value on what the children are receiving in terms of the experience for after-school. Yeah? Thank you very much, Minister. Yes. That's, that's, it, that's it, thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. Of course, another historic weekend for St. Lucia. Johnson Charles, Akimogis, uh, Shadrach Descart, McKenny Clark, four players in St. Lucia team. They pretty much did very well for the entire tournament, but it culminated with our first ever CPL victory after 10 seasons. I feel there were other individuals that need special recognition, the likes of John Eugene from Kazabar Grusley. He, for the first time, was employed by the St. Lucia Kings to be the fielding coach. And uh, I think it goes without saying that this has been our best year in the field by far. Catches were taken. Um, we saw extra effort in terms of preventing boundaries. And I just think that he made a huge contribution to the overall success of the team. We have a high performance center that is doing very well. We as a St. Lucia nation, a St. Lucia nation can boast of seven players, including two females being considered professionals, being paid as professionals on the global level, a first for St. Lucia in our history. And so there's a lot going on in cricket development that we could be proud of. And I just think St. Lucia continues to enjoy a very successful and I would dare say the best year in sport. Questions? Um, it's unfortunate that this is a pre 
cabinet briefing. Uh, so had it been post, I'd have been able to answer that question with a high level of authority. Um, as you know, cabinet would sit down and opine on, on most of those things. And when we do meet in the next 10 minutes, uh, as the Minister for Youth Development and Sport, that would be my main item on the agenda. And uh, thereafter, we will be deciding exactly what we do, um, if we do more than what we've already done, especially for the local uh, cricketers. Um, so I think by tomorrow, we should be seeing some information and hopefully we could have that clear for everybody to see. Um, in terms of, you kind of, oh sorry, you kind of alluded a little bit to um, the development of the young cricketers. We saw, like the likes of Akimogis, being featured in almost every game um, for the Kings. Um, speak to the, the importance of this experience for them. I was indeed very impressed. And I think at the end of the day, people always speak about ministers traveling, especially when it comes to sport, as if you go there on a the border. I will say that I love sport. So anybody who flashes a camera on me while sport is taking place will see somebody who's, who's jubilant and enjoying himself. But the fact of the matter is I play an observer role first. I listen to what the coaches, the administrators have to say about especially the development of the sport and the development of our athletes. And I can tell you, for instance, McKinney Clark, a uh, young prospect, perhaps the fastest bowler on the St. Lucia Kings team, was not actually given an opportunity to play. But if you listen to the coaches and the administrators, they tell you that McKinney perhaps is one of the, the most gifted players and talented in terms of his mental strength, his attitude, his approach to training, his improvement throughout the year. But it's just unfortunate that this year, unfortunately for him, we had the strongest bowling team and he wasn't able to penetrate in terms of getting playing time, but he has done very well. Um, Akimo Gis, we see his maturation, we see him play in a final. I mean, a year ago, you would not have imagined that, you know, Akimo Gis, former West Indies captain, uh, young, everybody says he's, 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 he's small, uh, not as strong as other players, would be playing a final and he actually did very well. So for the tournament, we've been seeing flashes of brilliance for him, from him, and um, we can definitely look at him as a prospect in terms of leading the team one day. I know one day Akibo Gis will be captain of the St. Lucia Kings. Shadrach Descartes from Monipo, very, very good outing for him. And uh, just before I came on, Jeremiah Norbert, his parliamentary rep, said he knew that St. Lucia Kings were going to win because they played St. Lucians for the entire tournament. And he's one of those that got an opportunity uh, to, to play and be part of a professional setup. And I think that all got very, very well. Of course, Johnson Charles, we know, uh, stood out. He did very well. He had the most runs in the tournament for St. Lucia. And again, he's actually developed his play by adding different strokes that you would not think at 45 that he would have been able to actually harness and develop food. So, very satisfied. Um, just wanted an update on um, Kimani Mavius. Mm -hmm. Since we last spoke about him last week, what mm -hmm. has happened? Okay, so, <laughs> let me say it this way. Individual athletes in St. Lucia, I can say as a Minister of Sport, has been, and I would wish that journalists would actually get the actual athlete to speak because most times the belief is you need to go straight to the top. Individual athletes have agents, especially when you get to a level where you are considered professional, as Akim has. And the agents would definitely be the ones to negotiate contracts, to negotiate appearances, to negotiate commercials. And the information that I have was that a contract was negotiated for him to go to the Zimbabwe T10 League. Unfortunately, in a conversation with Alton Crafton, who is his coach and mentor for a number of years, he explained that the value of the contract and the cost of the flight were very, very similar. And from my information, the team decided that given the cost, that they were not able to bring on Kimani Melius to play that tournament. Of course, information gathered suggested that Kimani was willing to you know, get some money together to pay for the flight. But again, the value of him coming there from the team's perspective, given the fact that they did have players within their ambit to play the tournament, they further went on to tell Akim, I mean Akim, to Kimani that, you know, in no other way to say it elegantly, that his services were not required. 
That is the information I have from Alton Crafton. And so he was not able to play the T10 competition. The team went on to win the competition and he moved on, came back to the uh, High Performance Center where he is training currently right now. Um, with regards to the Cricket Premier League, um, what can you tell us? Um, the, SPL? the SPL? Yeah. Well, we have been looking for a window to host this competition in St. Lucia. Um, we have a situation where we do not have enough venues and we have a lot of sporting activities happening in St. Lucia. Right now, the Denry playing field, in terms of the stands, is pretty much complete for football. And so, we have to move into a proper dressing room construction and toilet facilities. Um, and so we're hoping that by next year, this entire facility will be ready for football, which would free up some other facilities for, you know, cricket activities. The Minuvale Park, of course, has been earmarked for lights for a while now. We are hoping that the lights should be complete in the Minuvale Park by the end of October. So that will be another facility available for cricket. The Grosley Playing Field is scheduled to be complete by the end of November another facility available for cricket. The when playing field, lighting program should be complete next month. And so cricket will see the availability of venues for their, their tournaments. Um, we are looking at the window between January and April next year. It is going to be a cricket legacy sort of competition, a T20 World Cup legacy, where the government is going to be financing um, some of that competition in terms of compensation for players. And uh, we're just looking forward to continuing the conversation and setting up a proper fixture. I will say that a lot of our cricketers are very, very enthusiastic about the tournament because they are playing more cricket than ever in the history of St. Lucia, and they're willing to show the rest of the world their talents and capabilities. Minister, but now you have to tell people, when will the St. Lucia Kings play a CPL final in St. Lucia? Well, <laughs> Again, um, discussions at the cabinet level, discussions with the CPL, uh, the hierarchy of CPL ongoing. We are looking forward to having it as soon as possible. We saw some communique come out that next year's final would be in Guyana. That has not been communicated to me as yet. But we've shown that um, wherever the matches are held, the St. Lucia, you know, is very, very capable of coming out on top. We're certainly hoping to have CPL finals at the Darren Sammy Cricket Grounds. I think we are in a position um, economically to actually host it, and that is another discussion we will have in that cabinet uh, moving forward. Yeah? Thank you. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. Hi, good morning. See, you have some new ladies. Miss, what's your name? Denise. From? Choice and then this. Oh, you've changed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Come straight. I'll just take the question straight away. That's Lisa doing right. hiding in the back there. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Miss Joseph. How are you? Good morning. Not hiding at all. I didn't know you you, you spoke to low profile people like me. I thought I was <laughs> Speaking to big leaders of the opposition, oh, wow. and, and I didn't know you spoke to low profile people like me. And welcome. I, I have to keep pushing because we're welcome. Not welcome. My influence. Welcome. No, no, no. We're friends. I always tell you that. We long. We're friends a long time. And that's why you're not accepting. My I always tell you that. You, you, you might want to put people yes. know that, but we're friends. Uh, so yes. Let's go. Yeah, Mr. Pierre. Um, I just want to speak to you about your meeting with the diaspora. Um, how did that go? Um, what were some of your talking points? And yeah, let's tell us a little bit about it. Well, first of all, um, the meeting was not a political meeting. It was a meeting with the Prime Minister and members of the diaspora, actually a conversation with the diaspora. There were two other ministers present, the Minister for, for Health and the Minister of External Affairs. Why the engine? The diaspora, it was, it was actually well attended. The entire room was packed to capacity, upstairs and downstairs and outside. It was actually where we spoke about the, the developments in St. Lucia. What was significant is I invited them to fact check me. And every step of the way, I invited them to fact check me. And just, we, we had some good questions. Um, the diaspora, seems to be 
to be very pleased with what's happening in, 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 in our country. I told them about the increase in pensions. I told them about the, the minimum wage. I told them about work at St. Jude. I told them about the, the, the infrastructural uh, developments, the investments in tourism. And we had a, a very good, very good conversation. It was fulfilling, it was fruitful. And I think the diaspora, um, will, they wanted to clear, they wanted some clearance, some of the things they, 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 they were hearing. And I did, I did my best. Example, they weren't aware that every CIP passport is done by the passport department, that they weren't aware of that at all. They didn't realize that St. Lucian passports and CIP passports are done in the same place. They never knew that. It was, it was, it was really, it was, it was, it was surprising the, the, the amount of misinformation that has, that's been going around. They, they thought that the CIP unit had a group of passports themselves in the room and just give it. They never knew that. They never understood that. That the CIP passport and the Smithian passport, they're done by the same person, by the same clerk. The NIC, the NIC um, card is given by the NIC department. So when, so they weren't aware. So they finally done to them that it's almost impossible that anybody could have given 56,000 passports. It was impossible <laughs> because 56,000 passports would have to be written at the immigration department. So it was very, very interesting. I was very pleased with that discussion, very pleased. And I think that many things got cleared. So when you heard the criticism, it was my socks. You know, I, you, you can understand that many things got cleared. The opposition was listening to the diaspora meeting and um, I think you referenced Julian Alfred as a little black girl. And what? No, no, no. no. It wasn't the prime minister. There was a whole was thing practice. about playing the race card and you calling yourself um, Which, meeting? Well, Which, which meeting? Which meeting? Which meeting? Which meeting? The diaspora Could you please clarify Could you the please pay the tip? I'll tell you something. <laughs> I have challenged you. I have challenged the opposition to play the tapes of what they say I say. Play it. I've challenged them, you know. It's an open challenge. And you know, I'll tell you something. Let me tell you the, 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 the problem. The problem with me is that they can only speculate about me. But they have no, they cannot bring the proof. I have challenged them to bring a tape and say, I said so. They can't. I'll tell you something. I've never, I've never, in any speech I've made, ever referred to anybody's color. And I defy anyone to shut tape by said so. Defy them. I've also said, if anybody can prove that I ever gave anybody a passport, I'll resign. If anybody can prove that Philip Joseph Pierre was ever involved in giving anyone a Passport, CIA passport, I will resign. That's a challenge. So, hold on, let me finish. The, the, uh, yeah. So, what did I say? I, what, did, what did I say? Well, they had a whole discussion about the race card being. A discussion there. where? No, I don't. You see, I say something. I have so many exciting things to, 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 things to do for, for this country. So many things are happening that are exciting me. I don't have time. I don't have time to listen to propaganda and misinformation. If someone said that in New York, any reference was made by the Labour Party to race, that is desperation. And what concerns me is the attempt to destroy this country. Because you cannot burn the house to kill a rat. Because if you burn the house and you kill the rat, you have to rebuild the house. The people of St. Lucia will have a choice to decide in 2026 who they want to elect into government. <clears throat> and my position has always been clear. I've been in opposition and it's, 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 it's not a nice place to be. But I've taken my time. And look at my history. Look at my history. So all these lies and these, these things, I mean, that, was, that never came in, that never happened. And I want you also to play the tape 
to say where that ever came. But you know, is this this constant lies and misinformation? You understand? I I'll, I'll tell you something. I want you to read a book called The Ministry of Truth, and you will see where that is coming from. It's a concerted attempt to just make your own history. So you say something long enough, people will believe. So nobody will be nobody was there, so they say I said so. But they can never. I defy them. We can play tapes of what they see. I defy them to play any tape that says Philip Joseph Pierre has ever spoken about race in a political platform. If I speak about race, I speak about race in a generic sense and in a truthful sense. I have said it's no offense to say you're black. Why do you think it's an offense? It happens every day in the U.S., but right now, because of our, of our hypocrisy, we pretend that it's an offense to see someone is black. Why are, we saying, why are we doing ourselves that? I have also said that Haiti is a country that we should not say that we are ashamed to be from it. I've said so. I've said Haiti has its problems, but the problem with Haiti is Haiti was the first country in the world to liberate slavery. I've also said Haiti had, had, had a, a policy, once a slave reaches in Haiti, they become a free man. And I said we have to be proud of this country for that, in spite of the issues. That's what I've said. And these are facts. So all the propaganda and all the misinformation, you understand? And I want, I'm very happy you as a, as a young journalist is, are asking me these questions before you go and report it. I appreciate that. <coughs> Morning, sir. Uh, presently, we see you all looking down in the Middle East, um, Iran. One day you'll blame me for that, right? No, no, no. I, don't blame you I thought you'd blame me for it. Right? No, no, no. I blame you, but I don't believe it. I'm just asking you, with the gas prices as we were for a lot of countries down there, will that affect, uh, really affect us? And, and if it does, if it does, you know, how do you intend to go through it? Because in the end of the day, it's going to affect us. First of all, yes. I'm very pleased that the strike. That, I, that, that the strike that has been planned, the strike that's of course a problem, the pot strike, that has been resolved at least till January. I'm very pleased about it. That will of course does untold harm in solution, which of course they would, they would blame me for. But I'm very pleased that that strike did not take place. The war in, in the Middle East is frightening. Um, again, situation I have absolutely no control over. I hope that good sense prevails. St. Lucia's position on that is there should be a two-state solution. The right of the Israelis, the right of the Palestinians to exist in two separate states has been our, our position. But, but we have, little, we have as a small country, we have absolutely no control over that. Just have to hope for the best. Is that really what you want to ask? Yes. You yes. Sure? My... You sure you want to ask about the ultimatum, the November 1st ultimatum imposed by the opposition? He could answer that too. I don't think I don't this get involved with ultimatum. Okay. Okay, so my final question to yes. you. We just saw St. Lucia King's coming. I forgot to say it. Right. right. Yeah, you see? I, I know right here you said that we'll have a holiday. I didn't no, say so. No, no, no. no, 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 no don't misquote me. asking. We're on a roll. Can we see? St. Lucia, you know, <laughs> I'll tell you something. There is a deliberate attempt to dampen the spirit of St. Lucia. A deliberate attempt to dampen it, to spread bad news, to, to, to deal with issues. That they were but St. Lucia, I want to congratulate the kings. Very happy for them. In fact, the kings is actually a franchise. So it's not a St. Lucian team, it's a franchise. There are, I think, four or five St. Lucians on the team. Congratulate them. It's good for us. The name of St. Lucia, very good for us. Congratulations to them. Yes. Thank, you, thank you very much. Prime Minister, Yes. have you been briefed on the situation regarding VMAX, Caribbean VMAX LLC? Have I been briefed? Yeah, I've been briefed, yeah. I've been, to, I've been briefed by the minister. Can you divulge to us what... The, the, what, what uh, let me explain to you what the minister told me. The minister said to me that one of the principals in the, in the firm got himself arrested for smuggling cigarettes. That's what I was told. It happened in January, and there's a six months for him to be charged. And as far as 
I was told he's not been charged. That means the case has been has just dropped. But before he did that, he had already given up his shares in BMAX. That's all I've been told. Well, he I can has, tell he you. He has given up his shares. In he BMAX. sold. It, he said he's given up. He's given up his shares in BMAC, so he's no longer involved in BMAC. The person was in question. That's what I've been told. But he's registered here as the sole director for BMAX Caribbean. What I was told is that the the gentleman in the meantime has given up his shares when he got himself involved with the law by six months, and there has been no case laid against him. That's what I've been told. And this is enough for you to continue with the Yes, with the because what's interesting for me is the poor people who need housing, not foreign people who are involved in their issues. What's important to me is to house the people of St. Lucia. That's what's important to me. And what's important to me is when the due diligence of the money that comes has been cleared by the bank. That's all that interests me. Once the money that comes here has been cleared by the bank, Lisa, because the money doesn't just come here, it's cleared by the bank. And once money is cleared by the bank, I am comfortable with it. So you have no concerns that the due diligence process did not unearth anything? That is not true. Through. That is not true. At the time when the due diligence process was done, there was nothing, as far as my information tells me, there was nothing on the guy. So Interpol, Europol... I don't. You see, you you using this big. I tell you something. Listen, I tell you something. You see, Lisa, you, they frighten us. Europol, Interpol, they, they frighten us of that, right? It's small island, small island people. They frighten us of it. Listen to me. Every day, every day in the U.S. there are RICO cases. Every day, today they probably about six or seven. Every day, every day there are RICO cases. Every day in the U.S. there are cases of businessmen going up and court, civil matters. But they frighten us. They frighten you, and they frighten us with all these cases. They, so we, we were supposed to be scared. That's something. What's important to us, Lisa, is to develop this country. What's important to me is that St. Lucia has a housing deficit, a housing deficit that has not been handled properly. And what's important to me is that as Prime Minister, I will work to solve help to solve this housing deficit. What is the criteria so for developers? I'm very happy that we have started the Rogel project. We hope to start another one at, at, at Bonte, at, at Belvide. We hope to start another one in Rogel. That's all interesting. And I'm very happy. And these are progressing. All the rest is for law enforcement. I'll tell you something. If there is any case against anybody, including me, let the police arrest me. I put myself up to that, you know. I have said to you, all these issues you know, that have been raised, arrests are eminent, arrests. Go and arrest. Why the speculation? You in court, let the court deal with it, arrest us, be arrested, bring everyone to justice. That's my position. Apart from that, only what I want to do, I want to develop this country. So an applicant for, a, a, is for citizenship, if that individual were to have been arrested and flagged to be charged, for some serious crimes, would that applicants if, be granted citizenship? If the due diligence flags this applicant, he will not be allowed citizenship. That is what, and the due diligence, Lisa, is not done by me, not done by us. It's done by an international due diligence firm. That's, it's not done by us. We don't want to do it. And you don't think it's important enough for the government to say that we will wait? Wait for what? And wait for what? Or pivot from this from Pivot this for what? For what? For what? So you don't believe that for there's what? an issue? For what? Pivot for what? Pivot for what? Tell me. Explain you to me. You don't believe that there's an explain issue. To me, explain to me what you want me to pivot from. Explain to me. If you tell me, I'll give you what you want to pivot. Tell but me. The, when you so you wanted me, you didn't want us to start the, the housing project? Is that what you wanted? I'm not commenting on what your policy is. I'm okay. asking. My policy is, is any investor who has cleared the due diligence process and who has the funds, we will allow to work in St. Lucia. Any developer. Once, get it right? Once he had cleared the due diligence process, not from opinions of blog writers, once he has cleared the due diligence process. Let me tell you the due diligence process. Local due diligence, FIU, international due, due, due diligence, 
interview and the bank's portal. Five steps. Once that has been cleared, no problems. I'm not, once that has been cleared, I'm comfortable. Okay, let's just move away. So, Jerry, um, just one second. Pardon just one. me. Hold on, hold on. Pardon me, if you don't mind. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. but if the Prime Minister would indulge me, I'd have one or two further questions. Is it other reporters in the room who have Thank you very much, well? Mr. Isidore. If the Prime Minister... Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Lisa. We're not fighting. Will, go ahead. I mean, no, Why are we always fighting, St. Lucia? We are so fighting. Let's go, let's go ahead. I'm we not angry. Fight. I'm not calling for war. Let's go. No, no, am I. I'm not angry. I'm not, I don't want a mafashi. I'm <laughs> very happy about St. Lucia. Let's go, let's go, let's go. No, let's, no, go. No, let's go, let's go. I'm, I'm not vexed. Just two more questions. I'm very yeah. pleased. You see, I'm so happy about St. Lucia. St. Lucia is such on a good trajectory, Lisa. If you see young people lining up at the youth economy to go into their businesses, you, you notice work on, on, on the show say, happening. You notice the Rockle housing scheme is happening. You have secrets going to open in February. I'm so excited about St. Lucia. I'm so excited. So, I'll, I'll, entertain, I'll entertain you for two days. Let's go. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yes, would yes. Too, though. Mm. Uh, with <coughs> respect, just continue on the CIP. Mm -hmm. Can you now confirm to us uh, that Mr. McClaude Emmanuel indeed visited Washington, D.C.? Mr. Gordon Emmanuel is, 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 an, is an adult. He's an adult. He's an adult. He's an adult. Ask him. Can you confirm? He's an to adult. Ask ask him. I don't know. With ask him. Martinez, he is an adult. And he held discussions he with is, other entities beside Philip Martinez. He is an adult. Ask Mr. McClaude Emanuel. What do you want to ask about him? I'm not answering for him. Did he go to Washington, D.C. for official business accompanied ask, by his wife? Ask Mr. McClaude Emanuel about he and his wife. He's a big man. The last time I saw him, he was a big man. Ask him. Has he given you. A full report coming back from the Washington. last time I saw McClaude, he was a big man. Ask him the questions you want to ask him. All right, so Jerry, yes, Jerry, how are you doing? I think Jerry was asking about Marshall, it was great. No, I just want to ask him about the economy and what's happening because maybe he's coming to be in October now. And how was the doing? economy? The economy is doing the economy is transitioning properly. There are still downside risks. The main downside risk is a climate event. That's a main downside risk. You're happening in Florida now. As I've told you many times before, I'm very concerned. That's what I lose sleep for. I don't lose sleep about the, 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 other, thing, the, 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 the other excitement. I lose sleep about a hurricane. I've told you this before several times. I lose a lot of sleep about that. That's one. The second downside risk is what's happening in the international arena. Oil prices, the war in the Middle, Middle East, I lose a lot. I, I'm concerned about it. And the third one I consider about is the gun violence. Apart from that, the economy is well on track. We're going to have the biggest cruise season ever, starting on Thursday. Our tourism numbers for August were higher than 2019. These are facts. You understand? The minimum wage is in effect. It's... We've opened the minimum wage office to ensure that the minimum wage is followed. The, the office has been, has, has been opened. Very excited about that. We are, we are in negotiations with the public servants. We are, the, the, the negotiations are going on very, very, very um, peacefully. We are hoping that we can continue the flow because I've asked the civil, the civil service I've asked the negotiating team to see if we can expedite matters so we can get the negotiations completed. We have a mole problem, the Ministry of the new building, and I won't ask you, I won't tell you, I won't speculate as to how the mole got into the new building. If you find out, if you do your research and you find out who did, you see, I did something. I want to dive it a little bit. I did something. I did something. Sometimes, I actually feel amused because, you know, I have a country to run. I have a country to run, right? So I do not answer everything. When I have people all in a sudden have got very sanctimonious and have got very, very, they've seen heaven, pious, they've seen the Lord. When I have people who were in government, who their record, their rap sheet is clear. When I hear these pronouncements, 
It doesn't bother me, you know. You know what, 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 what I've told you what I lose sleep over. I've told you what I lose sleep over. So, I am very comfortable with other countries. I have told you the downside risk. We're working on, 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 the, down, on the downside risk. 17 new police recruits are going to be out of training by the end of the year. So this can add to the to the 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 police the po police force. The police are going to get. By the way, six new ambulances are going to be delivered to the emergency people this week. Six brand new ambulances. The police are going to get some new vehicles this week. The work on the grocery the grocery the northern division quarters is is going on. We've just ordered the furniture for the Viewfort police station. That's, that, that's happening. Repairs to every other police station are happening. M many other police stations, not every, happening. Marshall was completed. We're going to be doing some work in Marigo. We have issues in Ansari. That work is, is happening. So um, our roads, the road development has begun. You see work on the chaussee. What's happening in the chaussee is significant in that we are changing the pipes, the utility source. So what's happening now is we're changing the pipes because you heard people, you hear people complain as soon as roads are repaired, Wasco has to dig it. Because so we change so what's happening now is they're changing all the pipes. So we're removing the pipes so we can have the the, the, the road resurfaced, right? What's going on in, in facilities? I want to tell you that we are building a steel a diamond steel pan shell for the diamond steel orchestra, steel orchestra in Cassius. So we can revive diamond steel, so we can revive steel band back because you know you Marshall was known for for, 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 for for steel band, diamond steel, diamond steel orchestra that's happening. I want to also tell you that work on the Marshall grounds. We are redoing the the pavilion there. We've just completed work on 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 the Mindo for the park. We're going to be starting work on ten new sporting facilities. Work is going to be on, work is happening on them. So a lot of things are happening. You understand? Um, I've mentioned to you the investment in 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 the in the hotel plant. So many many things are happening. Work has started on the road the road the, the Pope site shopping complex. Work has started, go, go, you can go see for yourself. So things are, we're finalizing the work for the, we're finalizing the plans for the House of Justice. Work should start there be, be, before the end of the year. So many things are happening, and these things are things you can, you can go and see for yourself. So we're not speculating. We're not talking about they say, you say, he say. We're not, spe we're talking about tangible things that you can f touch for yourself. The insolvency bill, 10 years in, in thing, we're giving businesses a fresh start. No, no, no pun intended. Um, so these things are things that you can touch. The, the, the unemployment, lowest for a decade, first quarter employment, we intend to go down, we intend to, to, to decrease further. I've said to you that my aim is to have single digit unemployment in this country. That's my aim. Youth unemployment from 40% and now it's 18, still too high. We want to bring it down. We want to see if we, can, if we can reduce it. We're going to make greater investments in the youth economy. Things are not perfect. We never had a perfect country. But we're striving. We're striving to put a country on a better footing. And I'm very happy with what's happening so far. Uh, I don't know if it's Jerry or who wanted to ask if you receive uh, two buckets of paint promised by the leader of the opposition. I think he's into, he's been watching HGTV lately, and he's into remodeling. Have you received any paint in your office? What do you want? Yeah, I'm a serious guy. All right, I have a question about the the scale of the halls of justice. Um, some people have, have um, queried as to um, whether it would be I guess I guess the question is whether it be too big in that area. Yes, that's, um, yeah, yeah. Could you comment on that? Yeah, that, that, that comment and is it, and this is decent this this is decent debate, decent discussion we can have. 
that's what we are, that's what the country must be about. The country must be about discussion, not bitterness and propaganda and misinformation. That is a that's the discussion that we can have and we should have. I'll tell you something. That area was always for a court, always a court area. The building we, we, we that is intended to go there is a very is a five story building, I think. All the courts are going there. We're using the extension, the old education department. There's some discussion that probably it may overshadow the church. But I'll tell you something. Go to every city in the world. City space is valuable space. Right? Now, what we've done is we are in discussions to see if we can create enough buffer so both the church and the house of justice, and the house of justice can coexist. But the idea of a building, a tall building, is, a, is something we have to deal with because of our development and because of the scarcity of space in Castries. But the whole discussion, and we hope we can end up with a win-win situation, everyone can be happy. Um, where are we with the Cassidy Street project? The Cassidy project, um, there were a series of unfortunate events. Number one, there's, there was supposed to be the, the toilets. The special toilets, they got broken my, when they, in shipping. My information is they were sent back to all the new ones, and then the other ones came and they sent back the same broken ones. <laughs> so my information, you see, and a lot of these things are beyond, are beyond our control. Not, well, not beyond our control, beyond, beyond the country's control. The, so I understand now the new set has arrived. And then there are special doors, these are arriving. So hopefully we should get their own. But there, there have been some delays, basically due to um, supply supply issues. Okay, Mark, mm. I want to go back to the discussion between you and the sir. I just want and to who? clarify one thing. Mm -hmm. um, in regard to Bivat, you, you did say that the, the principal, the person at the center of the controversy, he is no longer the principal. Of That's the what I understand, yes. yes. So, um, BMAX Caribbean Corporation here, that was registered here, he is, he was, what well, is the sole um, director. So, who is that new person then, if he is not... Let me the, explain something to you. He's not a principal anymore. Let me explain something to you. I've told you, I've told you, I've told everybody that wants to hear. The process of getting investors in this country is clear. They have to go through a due diligence process. I've told you, once the due diligence can find anything that is not to the benefit of the people of St. Lucia or to the reputation of St. Lucia, action is going to be taken. As far as what, you, what you're telling me is concerned, my understanding is that guy is no longer part of that organization. Yes, I understand, which is why I'm asking yes. you. So just, it, you said that he's no longer. That's yes. my understanding. Yes. But here in St. Lucia, where BMAX um, LLC Caribbean is registered. He's the sole principal. Oh, he still is. He, he's the, no, I'm saying when he made the deal here with us and all and whatnot, he was and is the sole director. So since he is no longer associated with BMAX, who now, who is the director of BMAX now? In St. Lucia, who, who is the director now? The director would have been, had to be somebody else. But do you know who the person is? No, I don't. You don't know who the person is. Know, is it information that can be shared with of course, the media? Of course. I mean, you, have, you can ask the CIP people. You can ask the minister. He's telling you. It's a public, public document. This, okay. is, this is not secret, you know. It's in the registry. How did we not be his relationship with St. Lucia? I don't know. Do you know the introduction? No, I don't know. I don't, same I don't know about, about how Galaxy began in St. Lucia. Yeah. Question. Yeah, go ahead. That's it? That's it? Right, yes, sir. Thank okay. You.